So we're back. Uh, I've got my feathered friend here. So we will talk uh, about the answers to your research about doing acute pancreatitis. Hopefully this one was uh, enlightening to you guys. Um, so let's get started. So I am not going to play the pancreas song for you. It seems a little bit silly to do, uh, but if you need these slides up later, they will be up on Schoology and my teacher webpage, uh, so you can play that later for yourselves. So as a little bit of review, and we did this a little bit in our cardiovascular system, and we've touched on it throughout the year, but you've got to remember that when you see something ending in itis, it just means inflammation. So pancreatitis means inflammation of the pancreas. It doesn't tell you anything about the cause. Um, and pancreatitis, and, when we're, and when again, when I had you guys do your work, um, I wanted you to focus on acute pancreatitis. Uh, there's a variety of ways you can wind up with... Uh, a sick pancreas, you can get a lot of different insults that all basically wind up at the same endpoint here. So we're going to focus on some biggies, um, and it really helps to see where your pancreas actually is. Um, so here's a picture, and remember, your pancreas is tucked in a little kind of bend in the pathway um, underneath your stomach in you know, this big 180 degree hairpin turn with your duodenum um, and your pancreas creates a bunch of, ju bunch of juices, um, exocrine pancreas, digestive juices, uh, bicarbonate to neutralize stomach acid through the pancreatic duct, um, but your liver and your bile duct also have a passageway, even though they don't need the pancreatic duct per se, its tubing goes through there. And that's important to remember. So they don't need the pancreas, but they do have their tube pass through there. It's kind of like a toll road that's going through somebody else's property. So how does, it, how does your pancreas get inflamed? Well, it's got to get injured. And how does that happen? There are two ways that are really common and the bronze metal is really just a mix of a bunch of other things. So let's focus on the two biggies here first. And if you remember nothing else, remember those. So your gold medal is the gallstones. Um, that's your winner. Uh, in silver medal, just finishing in second place is alcohol. And your bronze medal is a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, but collectively, even if you add up all the kind of things that fall under the other category, they don't even add up to the same percentage that alcohol would, and they, man, that doesn't even touch uh, gallstones. So if you can only remember two, gallstones and alcohol. So the question is why? Why do these things cause your pancreas to be sick? And gallstones are relatively easy, and it's a couple of steps. So if you go back and think about your anatomy for a second. So if your gallbladder starts making, you start having gallstones. So you just get too many, you have a high fat diet. You start having these little kind of nuggets of cholesterol that start building up in your gallbladder. Um, and they start forming layers and, you know, start crystallizing. Um, they can get stuck. It's like a kidney stone. It can get stuck where it's, you know, supposed to get excreted out into your duodenum, but if it gets too big to pass through, it's gonna get stuck. So then what happens? Well, it depends on where it gets stuck. If it gets stuck in the bile duct really close to your gallbladder, now your gallbladder is gonna get inflamed and that's it. It's gonna get backed up and your gallbladder gets big. But if it gets stuck in right where it's supposed to come out, by the pancreatic duct and all that passageway and tubing comes together, now everything gets blocked up. And if everything gets blocked up, then your pancreas starts to get sick. And that's a really bad thing. 